بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome back to our course Deep Learning for Computer Vision Today we'll continue our work on machine learning issues and our topic today will be about the optimization techniques or methods uh, that can be used for uh, in machine learning as well as in deep learning So let's jump to our uh, uh, lecture slides and see what is uh, what about this topic and how we can uh, comprehend the ideas behind the concept of the optimization uh, tools and techniques. As clear from the title of this lecture, it's uh, optimization and machine learning. So before starting, what is meant by uh, optimization? Optimization is mainly the computation methods that can be used to iteratively minimize the error between uh, the uh, targeted output and the real or actual outputs for uh, overall the system. So it is very closely related to the cost function. So we, when we minimize our errors, we improve the performance of the uh, system, uh, machine learning system. And in this case, we are using the proper optimization techniques. So what about, what are the optimizing uh, tools that can be used or methods that can be implemented? There's a long list of applications. You can see uh, uh, these things uh, on the internet. However, we'll try to concentrate on specific, uh, let's say, algorithms. We'll talk about logistic regression concepts. We'll talk about stochastic gradient descent. We'll talk about SGD, which is the stochastic gradient descent with momentum. And we'll uh, 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 just mention other and uh, discuss some other optimization techniques. So what is the logistic regression? Logistic regression is a supervised machine learning algorithm for classification. So we can use the logistic regression concept or uh, method uh, iteratively in order to uh, improve and to get uh, the uh, result in a supervised machine learning tool for uh, classification pur purposes, purposes. Logistic regression is a statistical method. Here, in this method, uh, we are going to use the prediction uh, when the dependent variables or outputs are categorical. So, when we have classes at the output, class one, two, three, categorical uh, situation, we can use the logistic regression. When we have at the output dependent variable variables, so we um, don't need uh, or we don't have overlapped or dependent independent. Uh, so we, when we have uh, variables that are dependent on each other for the output, in this case, we can use which is a regression, simply and straightforward. Uh, also, it's very familiar to uh, obtain or to use the logistic regression when uh, we have uh, data points belonging to the range between zero uh, or belongs to a class either zero or one. So it looks like a categorical output having two uh, values, either zero or one. Uh, in this case, uh, when we talk about the output y dash, assuming that we have the input y, in this case, the uh, y dash is the predicted output, while the y uh, is the uh, learned output or the actual output. So we have, uh, if we have y dash is the probability of having y equals to one, uh, given an input, uh, specific input x. So this can be uh, um, can sum summarize the main idea of having the, the output, which is the predicted output, uh, with the uh, actual output. Uh, when we know its probability, this means that we are uh, as as here as we get higher value for p, we are assuming or approaching the value of y hat or y dash. So again, the loss function and the cost function. Now, the loss function of the logistic regression in this case would be the following. It can be written this way, minus uh, the negative sign of y log y dash plus 1 minus y log 1 minus y dash. This is the loss function for this specific output. If we want to talk about the cost function, this means that we need to find the overall uh, 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 loss um, for all the, uh, outputs in this case. Now, when we have an input, an output y equals to one, this means that L y dash y will be one by log one, which is zero. 
Okay, again, one minus one, zero, log one minus y, zero. So when we have y equals one, this function will be converted into log y, log y dash. Because we have one at this location, so we have here a value of one, we replace this by one, this will be replaced by one, okay? And as a result, we'll get this value equals to uh, minus log y dash, while here we have, we can, we get a zero value. So it will be removed. This means that the output of this situation will be log minus log y dash. This when we when the output is equal to y, uh, the output y dash or is uh, or output zero is uh, approaching the uh, the desired or the um, uh, designed uh, let's say output. Now when we have y equals zero, this will be this equation is clear all these things here. Again, when we have a y equals zero, this will be zero, and this will be zero also. So this term will be removed, and we'll keep this term with one minus zero one, look one minus one minus y dash with a negative sign, of course, at the output here. So when we have an output y equals zero, this will means that we are approaching the uh, predicted or the designed or desired output y dash. Uh, in general, the, uh, the loss function in this situation is convex and uh, it has a single global minimum. Now, if we talk about the, the cost function, what's the difference between the cost and the loss functions? The cost function is an average of all the loss function values obtained for all the training data sets. So when we have a lot of inputs uh, and we classify these inputs to get the outputs, we want, want to find the loss function for every single uh, output, then we combine and find the average value for all these, uh, these things, and we find, in this case, the loss function. As you see here, the loss function, the, sorry, the, the cost function. The cost function is given in terms of the W parameters and the B parameters. And it's very important because when you modify W and B, you will modify the output Y, I for all I. And this will give us uh, a clear idea about the relationship between the uh, loss function and how to optimize or how to um, apply the computation, a suitable computation method uh, to uh, reduce the error. This computation method is the uh, optimization uh, technique that will be used or tool or algorithm that we use to uh, reduce the error and improve the performance of the output. And for sure, this is a very good uh, tip here. The loss function varies from application to another. So we cannot generalize that this, cost fun, this loss function is suitable for all applications. It depends on the application, on the inputs, and on the data sets, on the, uh, all, a lot of issues there. And sometimes it may be working very well at a specific task, while it, is, it will be uh, bad for other tasks. Now let's talk about uh, stochastic gradient descent, SGD. Uh, the SGD algorithm is a uh, first order iterative optimization algorithm that can be used uh, to optimize uh, the outputs and to improve the system performance by applying the back propagation and reducing the error uh, during the, these iterations. Now we apply the gradient descent uh, to the cost function L to minimize the cost. So what will be this uh, SGD when applied to the uh, cost function L uh, to, min to minimize the cost? It's an iterative process uh, that can be performed on a subset of the input data instead of all the data set. You know, sometimes when you have a very large data set, uh, let's say uh, maybe hundreds of thousands of uh, samples or inputs, it will not be easy to apply uh, the operation all over the inputs every time, every iteration. 
So in this case, we are going to select uh, a subset of these uh, samples, and this will be uh, clarified later on. And this subset will be used uh, will be used to be uh, uh, applied to the SGD and maybe any, any other algorithm for optimization in order to guess or in order to to expect or to follow uh, the the um, let's say the modification in in the uh, uh, fine tuning process uh, of the parameters of the network. Now. Uh, this is the main idea behind the SGD. It works the different way. We try to reduce or to modify uh, or update the uh, weights W as the previous value W minus alpha del uh, over W in terms of uh, in the, the rate of change or the modification in the, in, in the uh, uh, cost function or the loss function in uh, respect to the W parameter. Uh, the same thing for the bias B after is equal to B before minus alpha del over del V of the loss function uh, L uh, in terms or in respect to the variable B. Here the alpha is a constant value selected in this way and it is called as uh, uh, learning rate, the system or the neural network learning rate. If you look at this uh, curve here, you can see uh, how it the value of change is trying to zoom this part. Okay, back, sorry. Just a moment. We'll try to zoom this part and see what is going on here. You see now uh, when, uh, on this curve, here we have the value of when the L is changed or when W is going to be changed. And the error, uh, in this case, we are reducing the value of W in order to get or to obtain a zero value at this location here. Of course, the zero value is not always obtained, but as we go further, we decrease the value of uh, the uh, error uh, rate and improve this, the output system performance. Now, um, this is another, another uh, way of the uh, of working with the, let's see this one. Okay. This is when we, we use the gradient descent. Uh, we take the other side when we have uh, the error. Uh, starting at a high value, then it is going to be reduced uh, until or modified until we get uh, uh, here in this case, the W value will be improved or it will be increased in order to reduce the error and uh, assuming that we get at uh, uh, running uh, steps, uh, the value will be decreasing and decreasing until we reach a value of minimum or zero. So we have here at least, for example, 20, 30, maybe 40, or more uh, steps to uh, obtain uh, the uh, minimum value for uh, this case. Now, when we talk about uh, a combination of logistic regression with SGD, uh, here, uh, in general, we know that to get the output, uh, uh, is the weighted sum can be found as the W multiplied by X plus B, of course, here the W value has been transposed because we have the W weights, W1, 2, 3. It's in a, in a, sort, in a sort of a vector, in a row vector, and we transpose it in order to, go, to get, uh, uh, to get a, a, a column vector for uh, vectorization applications and simplify the uh, calculation of Z. Next, the value of Y which is equal to the value of the active output of the activation function. After applying, let's say, a sigmoid or the activation function, in this case, we have, in the case of the logistic regression, we are going to use the sigmoid activation function. And in this case, to, to calculate the loss, to calculate the loss, it will be, as you see here, is the same as uh, was done in uh, as shown in the previous, uh, as was shown in previous uh, 
slides. So this type of uh, operation combines the logistic regression with the SDD technique uh, to uh, get uh, better performance uh, as much as possible. I see here the now the value of the let's have here a pen. Then we calculate the value of y, and we feed back in the back propagation the value of a. Find the rate of change in a in terms of the value z. Then we find the rate of change in z and find the rates of change in W and modify the W values and repeat for uh, feed forward, then go back in the backward and we repeat the process until we reach uh, 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 this function being minimized. This is a general case. It can be uh, for any uh, optimization uh, technique. Okay, so we have delta A, delta Z in this case, and this is the uh, the variables that will be changed. Let, let's have a look at uh, this minimized version now. Uh, this is the loss function as indicated, uh, prescribed earlier. Now, if you want to find delta A or DA, it will be delta L over delta A. Okay, let's zoom this a little bit. Okay, so um, DA is equal to del L over A because the change will be here done between uh, A and Y. So it will be uh, in, uh, the loss in terms in respect to A, the rate of change in respect to A. And if you uh, have this L loss function as LAY here uh, for a single value, uh, you can find that uh, the this is the uh, this is the function L and its derivative can be written as minus Y over A plus one minus Y over one minus a. This is the this is the derivative. This is the derivative of this function, and this is the result. Okay. And this is for delta a or del the d a. Okay. Let's continue now. We want to find dz. dz is equal to del, a, del L or delta L over delta Z. To find uh, delta Z or dz from delta L, we'll use the uh, this property in mathematical uh, derivatives, partial derivatives. It will be del L over del A multiplied by del A over del Z. This will give us an output A minus Y. Because the modification or the change between A and Y gives us the change produced by Z. It's simply A E minus Y. Now we will go to the W values. And the, 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 uh, if we are talking about, for simplicity, two W values, W1 and W2 for the weights, and one bias. In this case, we have uh, the following equations. If you look at these, again, to find delta, uh, to find delta L, dW1, it will be dL over dW1. This will give you del L over del Z as multiplied by del Z over del W1. Now, uh, del L over del Z is equal to, as see here, uh, this equation can be obtained from here, which is equal to A minus Y. Now, del Z over DW or del W1, this will give us actually the X value because the change done on x is by modifying it by multiplying it by the w value. And this gives us a sort of x1 multiplied by dz. Why? Because dz is equal to a minus y. And the change rate of change for, or the change in uh, dz over in respect to w1 will give us x1. Similarly for uh, dw2, the same thing, it will be a minus y multiplied by x2 
and this will be x2 by dz. Now we'll go to del delta or db. It will be del l over db. The same thing here, instead of having uh, the value of um, the function dz over dw1 over del w2, this one or this one, we just modify it to have uh, a value of b because we are dealing with uh, here uh, the variable or the bias value b. Okay. Now, as you know that this uh, this uh, uh, there's no no change in this uh, in, in this respect. This will give us del l over del z, and the modification will be uh, just simply written as uh, a minus y multiplied by one because there is no change in no var no variation. Uh, in del b over del z, and this will give us a value of one, and this gives us a, um, as um, a minus y, which is equal to del del z uh, or dz again. Okay, let's remove all these boxes from here. So now we can modify uh, with when we have SGD, we can add our uh, parameter alpha as you hear. This is the learning rate. Can add it to uh, the modification in W1, in W2, etc., and to the uh, biases B1, B2, etc. Uh, in this case, we are modifying the values of W1 and W2 in, in respect to. Uh, uh, the modification in W, but with multiplying it by a scaling factor or uh, the learning learning rate. Here are simple examples. Let's try to zoom this. I try to show you this one here in the mid. If you look at this two-dimensional curve, or three-dimensional, you can see that we have here. Or the value here, we have uh, the value of uh, W modification, the value of B, okay? And uh, this is the output uh, uh, after uh, to that uh, calculates the output in terms of the L and W, which means that we have here, this, is the, this function will be simply L or the uh, loss function in terms of W and B, okay? Let's see here that as we Move further uh, in iterations, we can find that the error is uh, going lower and lower and lower. And this is very clear here from this counter here at the, at the corner. If you look at this, you can see that the modification is done. And you can also track and see the modification done or the obtained uh, modification when uh, for the uh, value or for the error uh, with uh, going down and down until reaching uh, the. Uh, uh, the lowest value or the smallest value uh, or the minimum value in this case. Okay. Uh, let's start a simple uh, application or simple example just to understand what's going on. Having two inputs x1, x2 uh, equal to three and two, three and two respectively, with uh, an output y equals one, and uh, an alpha parameter equals 0.1, with w1 and w2 equals b and equals zero. So we start from a zero uh, initial value of zero, and we try now to uh, uh, rise up the values and change the values until we reach uh, the uh, the goal. In this case, we just uh, try to demo or to demonstrate only one stage or one. Uh, iteration. This is our system. As a reminder of what we discussed just a few minutes ago. Here we have, uh, let's remove these uh, things. We have here, as you see, we have delta A or D, D, D A and D Z is equal to this function for dA, this function for dz, and the dW1, dW2, and dW, dDB as being obtained this way. So what will be going on uh, to apply these equations? 
It's just a recap for the previous uh, slides. Okay. So it is required to modify the values of the weights and biases in order to, of course, we, are, we have two weights and one bias uh, in order to uh, minimize the error. Let's start the matrix formulation. The inputs are x1 and x2, x transpose, w is equal to w1 and w2. Now, the error, the gradient is equal for in terms of w and b, will be delta l or del l over delta w1, del, del l over del w2, del l over del b. So it's a effect transition type of the error. This will be equal to simply to dw, d omega 1 for simplicity, dw2 for simplicity also, and db again. Now, remember that dz is equal to a minus y. It has been here uh, as uh, uh, defined, as you see. Here dA is equal to this value. dz is equal to a minus y, and etc. for other uh, terms. Now, this is a good question. What about the value of A? So, what about the value of A? What is A in this case? A is equal to the sigmoid or the activation function of Z. So, if you remember good, there's a relationship between, it's very clear that A has a, a meaning uh, for uh, uh, um, let's say a correlation or let's say a relationship with L uh, with sorry with Y. Okay, I'll keep this for you in order to understand the topic. So one, when we substitute the values of del or dw1, dw2, and db in this uh, matrix form, we can find this as a y a minus y x1 a minus y x2 and a minus y uh, for db. This will be x1 multiplied by dz, x2 by dz, and dz multiplied by one without uh, any value uh, as a scale. Now we have uh, the value of y equals, equals um, one. So we get x1, which is in this case multiplied by dz. How do we can get dz? is equal a minus y, is equal to a minus y. What is y? y is equal to one. How we get a? We need to apply a into the sigmoid. a is equal to one over one plus e minus uh, z. In this case, z is equal to zero because we have w1, w2, and b are equal to zero. So this will give us, yeah, yeah, simply if you want to, just uh, to show you uh, for your uh, convenience, now we know that a a is equal to uh, sigmoid of z, which is equal to one over one plus e minus z. Now z is equal to the w x plus b. However, w is equal to zero, b is equal to zero. This gives us z as zero. If you substitute this in at this location, you will get a as one over two. This is what was. I was asking about in the previous slide. So A equals 0.5. And this is what we try to find in this situation. Just for the applications, of course, this, uh, uh, these values will be uh, programmed and uh, your, your software will be running many times and you'll not be able to, uh, to track every single uh, value for its, um, uh, for uh, understanding for its, its values. Okay. So if you substitute now uh, for a 0.5 here and here, you'll get 0.5 minus 1, 0.5 minus 1, it will be, uh, the, of course, here dz is equal to a minus y, a minus y equals 0.5 minus with a negative sign. So it will be uh, minus 0.5 multiplied by x1, x1 is equal to uh, 3, it will give us here uh, the x1 is equal to 3 as defined uh, at the beginning of the example, 3, x1 is equal to 3, and uh, x2 is equal to 2. So when you, when you substitute all these values here, you'll get uh, an output matrix in this form, like this way. So this is the 
rate of change or the gradient of um, the uh, parameters in your uh, system at the first iteration. In a matrix form, we need now to update the values of W1, W2, and B. W1 is equal to zero, and alpha is equal to, I remember that it was 0.1. So you now just need to multiply 0.1 by DW1, which is equal to minus 0.15, multiplied by 0.1, multiplied by minus one will be 0.15. Alpha, uh, again, point, uh, point, uh, point 0.1 multiplied by minus, which means minus 0.1, multiplied by minus one, it will give us 0.1. Similarly, we can get the value of B after uh, applying the indication. So this is the output of the first stage or the first iteration of obtaining the feedback propagation according to the uh, logistic regression with a gradient descent uh, uh, optimization tool or application. Now, these values will modify. So we started by, at the beginning, we, uh, we have uh, these values as if you remember, we started by the values of uh, W1 as 0, W2 also as 0, and B as 0. And has been modified to 0.15, to 0.1, and 0.05. This means that we have changed these values, and this is uh, applied, will be applied to the next step in order to, uh, to see what, what will be happening as a result of uh, this error. Here I try to remove the uh, these things. The pen, okay. So by the end of this stage, we already finished our first iteration. We'll keep continue working on on uh, on uh, next iterations until we reach uh, 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 that the uh, the update is not changing. There is no improvement in W and W two and and B. And this is uh, this will will mean that we uh, have uh, reached a minimum or at least a final decision. Uh, send an example. Suppose that we have uh, I'm using automation techniques here. We are going to use HD with momentum. These are very familiar and very well known techniques. When we add the momentum, now suppose that you have this data. The data in uh, blue is the noise, it's a noisy data, noise, and the original data is hidden in the red, in the red uh, curve, and it is contaminated um, by the noise. This is the output sequence, and we, don't now, we want now to classify or to apply uh, our neural network in order to get um, uh, the curve uh, behind the, uh, the, no, the noisy uh, samples here. It's, it, it looks like a, a regression uh, uh, task. Um, mainly, you can use what we call the moving average filter. Uh, it is in DSP very well known. In order to denoise or reduce the effect of noise uh, and bring the data closer to the original function, this can be done, of course, using classical methods by applying the average filtering. It can be also done using the SGD with momentum, uh, which is SGDM. Uh, let's see, is, is our, our solution is to use the what we call the exponentially weighted averages. This means the momentum. The exponentially weighted average, averages uh, can be uh, converted or can be interpreted as applying the momentum to this function. How to do this? This is the data. Now we define uh, a new sequence V that can be obtained from the original sequence, which is S in this case we have. This is the sequence. In this curve, the, the samples, as you see here, the noisy data, including the noise and the uh, original data itself. While the, in the red, we have the, fun the function or the original function of the uh, useful data. So in this case, we are going to uh, define a new uh, sequence called VT at uh, the instant time T, which is equal to beta multiplied by VT minus one at the previous iteration. So this new data is uh, an iterative process, can be obtained by applying uh, uh, 
the first time the sequence ST, which is the original data, that uh, can be applied uh, and scaled by one minus beta, where beta is a hyperparameter uh, selected between zero and one. Then we add to this part, we add to this part uh, uh, a new uh, term beta multiplied by Vt minus one, which means this is the data at the previous stage defined um, as a new sequence. And the result will be apply, uh, getting the value of Vt as a combination of the uh, scaled version of the previous sequence output uh, multiplied by or added to the, uh, the uh, scaled version of the original data. This will lead uh, or will help in uh, improving step by step or gradually the input data, which is very noisy, by uh, the uh, scaled version of V T minus uh, one that is obtained at the previous stage or the previous, uh, let's say, iteration. And uh, time by time and step by step or iteration by iteration, it will be uh, improved uh, and uh, uh, the result will be very. Um, uh, acceptable for uh, different applications. This is the main idea behind using the SGD with um, when this you, you now see uh, uh, the uh, on the right hand side, let's enlarge this curve here the, if you see. Here we have many curves or different curves. We have the original curve in red. This is the target uh, targeted uh, curve. Here, uh, the momentum for this data is given this way. As you see here, as we go uh, further, um, we can we are, we are coming close uh, to the um, original function by applying the momentum uh, or the data uh, after being exponentially weighted uh, uh, average uh, application being employed. Uh, now, what about beta? As here, the, we have different beta values. The, uh, the curves here, for example, if we start by small beta, 0.5, we get the red color. It's very noisy. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's very uh, um, fluctuating uh, very uh, highly, and it's not very proper to, rep to represent the curve of the data. Uh, when we take beta equals 0.9, it will be, uh, or, uh, it looks like, it reflects uh, as uh, mainly, um, uh, let's say, um, the, it looks like an image of the uh, original data. When we take very high beta values, 0.98, it will be very smoothly changing and it will not reflect the original uh, data curve. And this will be uh, a reason for selecting beta uh, to be high, but not very, very high, to be high enough to reduce the fluctuations and not very high uh, to reach the uh, very uh, story varying uh, care that uh, doesn't represent the original data in, in, in this case. So when beta is very small, uh, new sequence is it will be very quickly fluctuating as um, I see here. I think it's uh, what was opposite because here we have this curve is the red for small uh, beta while this curve is for a high beta. Anyway, uh, these values can be uh, selected uh, in various ranges. However, a very common value for beta to be used is beta equals 0.9. So the SGDM or the SGD with momentum, uh, uh, by adding the beta parameter to the alpha parameter, which is a hyperparameter, uh, was selected in the range of uh, 0.1 uh, or maybe less or more, and here for beta, we have set this value to be around 0.9. You can modify it and uh, usually getting a value of 0.9 is very useful in many, many applications. Uh, and it works very nicely in classification and regression uh, uh, tasks. Now, uh, another issue when we talk about uh, the uh, output and to when we get uh, the error, the it's like a ball by uh, changing the values of W and B we are changing the value of the error, and the errors may, may get trapped, because when you reach this local minimum, uh, any increase in W or any change in W will increase the noise, and it will make the system or the software uh, be thinking that, oh, it's going up. Let's zoom it a little bit. So in you, if you take this curve, you are going down from uh, high values, so increasing W and the weights, so you reached 
this this location. Now, if you go further and increase the W, you will make the error be uh, larger, and this will cause your system or your software to uh, suggest to go back to this value. And this is called the local minimum because it's not a, a, a final decision because when you uh, climb, let's uh, see this this ridge. Uh, you'll uh, go further and find another uh, global minimum, which is the best one in this case. Of course, sometimes you'll not be able to reach uh, and you'll uh, get stuck with the such uh, local minimum. And it depends on the technique and depends on uh, uh, many things. I think it's, again, uh, I can't call it that. It's a matter, again, a matter of luck sometimes. But uh, of course, there's a, a verification for how to select your parameters in order to uh, reach the uh, global minimum. Now, a prettier solution can be obtained for the SGDM by applying this scaling uh, of the parameters for VT. So the VT value will be updated to be VT over one minus uh, beta T at this uh, for the beta value at uh, the current iteration. And when T is very high, after a series of uh, iterations, uh, beta times t will be approaching zero, and vt will be approaching uh, v hat t will be approaching vt. So when you increase the number of iterations, you are getting closer to the vt, and the modification is done in the intermediate stages to modify it by vt divided by one minus beta uh, t, and this will give us um, beta times t for sure, because when t is very high, point nine with very high value, it will be approaching one. And uh, when t is small, it will be uh, smaller, and the value of t will be scaled by a, a smaller value, and this will lead to uh, add uh, to the uh, input, uh, let's say, sequence uh, a small value. And by going further and further, you are increasing the effect of b and reducing the effect of s, and this will lead, as I mean, the the um, what we call it, the original sequence, and this will lead to. Uh, dominate the, the VT over S uh, during the time. And our equation will be finally VT will be beta VT minus one at, uh, plus one minus beta del W L W X Y. And W will be updated as W minus alpha VT. And of course, this equation needs uh, uh, some mathematical uh, verification. Uh, I will leave it for you and uh, to uh, search for how we can obtain these values for Vt and for W, uh, to, and the same thing for B, uh, for, of course. B will be, equals to, uh, will be equal to B minus uh, alpha Vt again, and uh, we'll uh, leave it as a, a, a homework for you to get um, its um, verification. Is there any optimizing techniques rather than these things? Of course, there's a lot of uh, optimizing techniques. Here we have what we call it Adam optimizer, uh, you can go to this link and see what is the Adam optimizer. It's very well uh, operating and working uh, computation method for optimization. Uh, we have also another very important R uh, optimization tool, which is called RMS Prop. And you can uh, look at this uh, location or this uh, website to see uh, how it works. Uh, this also, we call it Adagrad optimization. It also can be uh, useful to go to these links. And there is, uh, again, a bunch of uh, optimization techniques that can be used in this case. And I think uh, it will be useful to have a look at least to understand in general what is the main concept of using such techniques. However, the Adam uh, RMS prop, the Adagrad, SGDM are all uh, working well and per uh, their performance is uh, uh, more or less uh, acceptable. Here we have uh, a demonstrative example on these things. Suppose that this is the ball where uh, the error in two dimensions. And we used here uh, animation five gradient descent methods uh, on a surface gradient descent cyan and momentum uh, magenta color, other grad with a white color, RMS prop with green color, Adam with blue color. And as you see here, I'll try to zoom the curve to let you see what is going on. Let's start. Here we have the red, green, and white balls. Uh, went to a low a global minimum, while in case of the uh, sign, which is the gradient descent, and uh, the magenta only 
the momentum uh, we uh, reached a lo uh, lo local minimum. So uh, Adam Grant, RMS Adam, uh, gives you a more uh, deeper uh, uh, view about the optimization and gives you better performance at the expense of some uh, extra, uh, let's say, uh, calculations and uh, computational cost uh, in uh, this regard. Here, another care of, about the error and the, uh, how, uh, the here, for example, here, how we, how we can reach this global minimum for all these techniques. And here we have uh, the error, uh, the evolution of the error uh, and the, sorry, the, um, the, uh, the uh, accuracy of the output after um, many iterations as you see here, as you see that the uh, undergrad uh, is performing well, uh, followed by the, uh, let's see the RMS prop, uh, and the green is the momentum, uh, and the worst case was with the SGD when it stands alone application. However, this is not the case for all issues, for all uh, problems, but it gives a good indication about these, uh, these uh, 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 optimization tools. I think that's all talks for today. I know that uh, the optimization is not a simple issue. It, uh, it talks a lot of uh, uh, time for uh, regularization and for improving the uh, systems and the network's performance and uh, to reduce the errors, of, of course. However, uh, what we discussed today, I think it would be enough uh, uh, for you to start working with neural networks and with uh, uh, to understand how it, it, things are going uh, in these systems. I hope that was enjoyable for you and uh, it, it's the end of this lecture for today. Uh, hope to see you next, inshallah. So, uh, see you soon.